Welcome back, Zero K fans. Sorry for the short delay. That outline widget appears to have gotten messed up in the latest release, so I've just made sure to fix it locally. Push that once I'm done. Anyway, this game is going to be between KMR and Failthos on Tartarus, so let's get that started. Failthos, we just saw, was playing against Lowry on Obsidian. Did pretty well, but seemed to have a few control issues. Anyway, now he's going to be playing Floki Bots against Kmar. Kmar going Shebots on Tartarus, which is a much smaller map. As you see, smaller, bit more, bit cozier, but it is a smaller map, so it's something that has to be has to be kept in mind. You, it looks like Kmar is a bit more comfortable on this map to size as well. This isn't, I don't believe 8x8, I believe this is 10x10. 10 10. It is, no, in fact, 8x8. 8 8. So this is what an 8x8 8 8 map looks like, as I was mentioning last time. It's about this size. Raiders are usually quite effective on these maps, but typically it'll switch into Riot Skirmisher fairly quickly just because you don't have to worry so much about the size of the map. You don't have to worry about getting around the map as quickly. And first battle coming in. Failed us coming up against Kamar's Bandit. Kamar's Bandit just gets overwhelmed by numbers. Doing the right thing, but not quite able to move fast enough or deal enough damage to get rid of that ban to get rid of that glaive. So Failthos started out with a constructor, but got enough glaives in time. Nice timing there, gotta say. Very good judgment. And Kmar just keeping his wants to keep his convict safe. He wants to make sure he can expand a bit. Both players are fairly even for a convict. Kmar did go for very quick power. Is going for Commander Junior as well. While Failthos, he's going for a support. Or sorry, recon com, but he's not upgrading yet. Probably gonna looks like given the name, he's probably just mainly focused on Nano Lathe, but hasn't upgraded yet. Probably gonna for a little while. Failthos tries to raid, does not succeed, has to retreat, but. Loses a glaive in the process. And gonna try again. He could take this out. Unfortunately, it's a matter of micromanagement. Losing a glaive for a bandit, not the best trade, since that was actually two glaives for a bandit. So Failthos really doesn't have any easy way of harassing Kmar at the moment. He could actually go around the side here. In fact, the main base is protected by the Commander Junior. That is the one thing. You'd have to worry about that. One glaive for all these wind generators? Tempting. But I don't think Failthos is aware of exactly what is inside Kmar's base. One glaive as a cost of scouting there might not be a terrible idea, but then again, for all he knows, there are a bunch of lotuses and defenders and whatever, which there aren't, but for all he knows, there is. So I can see why he might not opt to sacrifice a glaive for that purpose. He is double dragon, making sure that Kmar can't easily expand to the mountain up here, though. Nice little preemptive move there. At the same time, expanding to the center and expanding along the side on his own. Taking the southeast as well, so both... So, Failthos is quite aware of the power of the Northwest and Southeast expansions. They are about 2.5 metal each. They're actually more valuable. 2.5 metal each in the Northeast and Southwest, whereas everything on the lower ground, except for these two expansions right here, or these two metal spots, I should say, only worth 2. Or actually, worth 1.8. These expansions are very valuable, and Failthos is aware of this. He's taking it for himself and trying to deny it to Kmar. Very good move there. Kmar, however, does have a roach... It looks like he's going to try to set this roach up to basically deal with this set of glaives. Kmar is fully aware of the glaives being here, fully aware that Feldos has units over here, wants to break that, make sure he can take the northwest, and he's going to try to do that, getting some bandits along south. Might, looks like he's trying to bait Kmar in a bit. He's going to try to, sorry, Kmar's trying to bait Feldos into the roach, and he's not going to be successful. Feldos is staying on the high ground. And the Roach unable to get close enough to actually deal any meaningful damage. Well, okay, obviously, it, the only damage it can deal is either meaningful or none. So, it's got one shot. And that's it. Kmar and Feldas, however, are pretty evenly split in the center of the map. Feldas, however, does not have quite as much defense in place, and his, his commander will be able to help defend against these bandits a little bit. And getting off the high ground, the Roach is not in place to deal with this, and the Glaze, nice flank there with the commander... So Failthos basically has Kmar's bandits dead to rights. If they go around the side, though, they are actually able to escape. Almost had them, but not quite. So let them go. However, there is a roach, and that's a bigger deal. At this one, Failthos has to tread very lightly. There are quite a few roaches. There's one roach, but one roach is more than enough. You step on one of those things, half your army goes down if you're not careful. Especially if your opponent is careful. Make sure to put it in the right spot. Still heavy raider game. Still very heavy in the raider phase. Another roach coming out, but 
I'm a bit surprised how slow it's taken for the rider, for the riots and skirmishers to come up to deal with these raiders. However, Kamar setting himself up very, very strongly on the east side of the map. And this roach is coming in. It's going to be able to get rid of half the glaives. There we go. That's what I was talking about. That's exactly what I mean. Half the glaives just go down right away. And the rest of them getting surrounded by the bandits and not able to get out in time. That was a huge amount of damage. That was easily 400 metal worth of glaives that just got sent over to Kmar. I'm sure he appreciates the donation very much. Metal is a valuable resource. It should be donated lightly. But Feldos was not aware of that roach. Very use, very good roach play by Kmar. Feldos, however, should be aware of this other one. He doesn't have a he saw it on radar. Not sure if he was paying attention to that though. He might not have been. It's getting lured in. His glaives going down once again, losing the rest of his glaives. That was a wonderful lure by Kmar. Feldos walked right into that one. And this one, Feldos has no glaives. He has decided, however, to switch over to ra to riots. This is where the riot switch is going to happen because. Simply not enough raiders can be built. Felthas shotgun auto repair system, so he's focused on riot play here. Completely switched over. While it would appear that KMR is continuing along with the raiders. Probably not going to do that for very long. Probably going to switch over to rogues and possibly felons fairly soon when it comes to seeing these warriors in play. But that triggers the switch over to basically the consolidation phase. We're already kind of in that, at least KMR was, but now Felthas. Moving into that, setting himself up with riot units to get through these raiders directly. Commander's a riot unit as well, and working pretty effectively too. Getting rid of one of these convicts for free. Although, one of the... No, the warrior actually taking a lot of damage. Failed as his commander, nicely there for support. And that warrior survives the encounter just barely, but it survives 27 health out of 800. Still, that was very close. At the same time, Kmar trying to assault the, north, the southeast side of the map, not to any avail. But he does have a Newton that's pushing this warrior back a bit, which really is kind of fine for the warrior, because that warrior needs to be repaired. Feldos should be repairing this warrior. That is the one thing he's not doing so right now. At this point, he can get away with this. He's actually not taking a whole lot of damage. In fact, Kmar is, he is seeding the left side of the map. He's seeding this west side of the map. This warrior is still heavily damaged though. Feldos not paying attention to it, just moving forward. And that warrior is up front. It's... That's going to go down. That's not going to be pretty. However, a lot of convicts are going down as well. Kmar losing most of his build force, really. He has one of his main base, and the rest of them are... Well, there's four left, one over here, consolidating the east side of the map. But Feltos is going for a very nice flank. Kmar is going to lose the northwest. Those warriors going to the northwest, taking that out. Unfortunately, the weakened warrior is the first one to go down to try to deal with the bandits. And a defender takes it out in one shot. That's what I mean. He needs to repair that. That could have just torn apart this entire area. Well, a lot of the area. But no. And Racketeer's coming in as well to help deal with this. And there are the rogues they're looking for. So Kmar going for rogues and Racketeers to deal with the riots. He has switched heavily into Skirmisher, the counter to Riot, which is no surprise. Getting to the slower section of the game. I think Raiders are probably coming in as well. Once, once Kmar gets more of his rogues set up, I'm pretty sure that Felthas is going to switch over to a bandit... Sorry, to a Glaive Warrior mix. And then once he does that, it should work out pretty well, but these Racketeers are being a major thorn in his side. Feldos' commander taking a fair amount of damage. He needs to avoid getting disarmed, and it's not being targeted directly, but unfortunately his Warriors are taking a lot of damage, not dealing a lot of damage, and not getting repaired either. Throwing away a lot of metal, he really does not want to lose units. The thing is, you can build units fairly quickly in 0k, but every unit... Not Lost is a unit that you get for the next battle. And no, he's going for a Rocco Warrior mix. So he's expecting to be able to win out by basically position management. That is how he's expecting to win. I'm pretty sure... Let's see, Rocco's have a range of 530. Sorry, Rogues have a range of 530. Rocco's have a range of 460, so Rocco's do have a major rage advantage. Sorry, Rogues have a major rage advantage. Rocco's have a major reload time advantage, being able to fire twice as fast. But overall, the DPS is about the same between the two. And Feldhaus' commander, taking a lot of damage, is not being retreated quickly enough. I, I'm i starting to suspect that maybe Jump is not available when disarmed. But he is still getting out of the way. And these warriors are going to try to push forward. But rogues, pretty much hard counter warriors. 
However, this Racketeer is in a bad position. The second Racketeer... Well, there's three Racketeers coming in. Two more coming in from the factory. So these Racketeers are just... They are not letting Failthos get any ground in here. However, Kmart's commander about to go down. Kmart's commander has gone down. That is one commander down. That's actually a fairly large chunk of his economy. Dropping down to 19 metal, down from about 25 or so. So Failthos does have an economic advantage. Kmart had a lot of energy in his main base, though. He was prepared for this. It's all in wind gents, and they're not too close together, but at the same time, Felthos is not pushing to raid anytime soon. Felthos instead is just going for Rocco's, like I said, Rocco Warrior mix. Trying to assault pretty heavily that west side of the map, and his own commander is actually in, in a good state right now. Full health. Admittedly, only 1800 due to the fact that it is a recon com, but still, fairly good health. And Felthos from here is just going to be... Well, he's going to be doing what he can, which is actually quite a lot. Unfortunately... It's limited by the Racketeers. That's the biggest problem. These Racketeers... Homing disarm missiles... They are not... Leaving Kmart... Sorry, they're not leaving Felthos with a whole lot of room to get around here. Not much he can do, but... It might work out. However, curiously, Kmart's not been going for any more roaches. We do not see any roaches on the map at the moment. Which would actually be very powerful if he used them, but he's not doing so right now. The Rockos, however, like I said, do outrange the... Sorry, Rogues do outrange the Rockos, and the Warriors simply cannot move in in time. So Failthos, he's pushing as hard as he can, but really his best option would be to flank. Just avoid this direct battle, flank it out, maybe get a Zeus as well. Or actually, just do an Air Switch. Honestly, I think an Air Switch into either Stiletto or... Maybe... Maybe Phoenix? I'm not quite sure, but definitely Stiletto would turn this right around, actually. He'd have a ton of room to maneuver if he did that, but he's not going for an air switch. No other factories have been built. He is pushing pretty heavily, just getting as much as he can into this factory. Getting a sharpshooter, however, to get rid of the racketeers. Interesting choice. I'm not sure if he has... Well, he's got the range if he does. I'm not sure if he has the vision on that, though. No, he does not. Velthos only has radar on up to about the this line right here. And the racketeers are actually just now getting into it. This retreat is pretty good. It just needs to... Needs to retreat into the sharpshooter. Still a bit of a risky move, though. That sharpshooter needs to hit the rack needs to be targeting the racketeers directly. It can't waste any shots on the rogue. It's gonna die if it does. It's gonna die regardless, but it needs to kill the racketeers first. Veldas' commander taking a bit of damage, but not a whole lot. But Kmar, importantly, is pushing down this western side of the map. Veldas, he's well, he's got his sharpshooter. It's gonna fire off on one of the rogues first, and that. Deals a decent amount of damage, but unfortunately, right in the middle of everything, so not the biggest help. The rogues, however, are not close enough for it to matter, so that sharpshooter is able to stay out of range. 700 range is actually less than the racketeers, but it is cloaked, which does help. However, its reload time is way too big, and there's the glaive. That's what I was expecting earlier. Switch back to glaive. Just racketeers cannot easily get rid of a bunch of glaives, and the rogues are useless against glaives, or near useless against glaives. Glaives can just run into their missiles, just tear them to shreds below that, and the sniper helping out as well, but really the glaive is going to be the thing that's going to get Failthos back into this game against the rogues, and at the same time, no switch from Kmart. His strategy has not switched yet, or his build has not switched yet. He has retreated a bit. Failthos is actually dealing some damage to these rogues, but not as much as he would like. And he is his commander's taking a fair amount of damage, he needs to get out of there, and it is... More Glaives pouring in. Glaive Rocco mix. Really, the Glaives are the best thing he has right now. The, Of course, the thing he needs to worry about is Bandits. Because Bandit Sports can't get rid of those Roccos. However, the Roccos don't even worry about anything. The Rogues are going down, and Warriors would actually be probably a slightly better option. But you know what? Rocco Glaive can work. Just needs to be very careful about incoming Bandits, which, are, which will be incoming. Bandits are on the build queue. So new bandits will be forthcoming, and the Roccos are starting to get the numbers on the Rogues. Starting the miracle advantage, however, the Glaives have all gone down. Another batch of Glaives is needed and is coming. The only three Glaives so far should have about a dozen or so in order to actually deal some meaningful damage against these Rogues. They're getting clumped up together. They are not, however... Some of the Rogues over to the north are hitting the mountain. They're slowing down. That is being problematic, but the Rogues over to the north... Well, Rogues further east. Rogues in the northwest are having the problems. The Rogues further east from there are not... Rocco's trying to do what they can, but fortunately not able to really deal with that height disadvantage. They're on the bottom of the hill trying to shoot up. That's not helping them at all. 
further glaives coming in, and the Rockos are dealing actually a fair amount of damage. They are staying alive a decent amount of time, just because the rogues have to retreat. I believe the rogues, they are on fight. Yeah, they are in fight mode, so they are auto-retreating. Over scout. What the? Okay, so apparently one of these rogues got morphed into, no, morphed into a moderator. That had, that was not a morph. No, never mind. That's an amphibious operations plant. Amphib factory has been built as support. Well, that scallop is definitely an interesting choice. Not the best choice for this case, but boys, however, that would tank a lot of shots. That would be able to deal a fair amount of damage. The sharpshooter, however, is in place, but there are too many targets. The sharpshooter wouldn't hit that directly. That would be a major problem. In fact, how loud is that? Oh, okay. Sorry, I just want to make sure the game volume wasn't overpowering my voice, but I doubt it is. Anyway, fail thoughts. Moving in here. These scallops are going to get rid of the glaives. That's the big thing. Scalps get rid of the glaives, the bands get rid of the Rockos, the sharpshooter can't do anything, and there's no warriors in place, which the Rockos will be able to get rid of as well. So fail thus. Army-wise does not have an advantage. Economy-wise, he does. He really could benefit, like I said, from going for air. Going for air, going for stiletto. That would just that would seal it. Right now, it's an uphill struggle. Well, on flat ground as it were, but it is an uphill struggle, metaphorically speaking. And occasionally literally speaking. And he needs to just turn it around. He needs to really get himself the advantage. The only way he's going to do that is by basically stunning out... Either stunning out Felthos or just shadowing all of these Racketeers. Taking a shadow at each of these Racketeers would also finish this off. That would basically leave Felthos with enough of an army advantage that it wouldn't matter. Felthos is commander, two auto repair systems, and a shotgun. Also a nano That's not going to matter in combat too much. If he repairs, it will, but I don't know if he's going to do so. He is moving forward. He is, however, getting disarmed and slowed. And Felthos continuing to push just with what he has here. Just with the Cloakybot Factory. And actually, Kamar is getting an economic advantage. He is... Because he has all of these comics around the map, he can easily go into Reclaim. Even with, without really having map control, he can just get the Reclaim at least when he gets the chance. He might lose the Convicts, but if they get the Reclaim, that still pays for themselves. That's still worth it. And Felthos is... Well, he has to retreat. He's, he's got this line, but it's not being held too well. The rogues just aren't pushing out. They aren't pushing through the line, but they probably could. However, the east side of the map looks like... Oh! Missed that. Hammer on the east side of the map is starting to get rid of these... Sort of getting rid of these lotuses. I believe some of them are reclaimed, actually. I think Kmart probably deconsolidated that. And there is a hammer getting rid of this. So, Failthos is trying to attack from both sides. Kmart is slowly being pushed back. Mostly because the rogues aren't moving forward when they possibly could. Just given the numbers that he has. Though Felthos is... Well, he's starting to turn this around. Even with the Racketeers, there's just enough units in play that the Racketeers are losing their effectiveness. Largely because they are targeting a single target each. They are not splitting their fire. They're simply targeting one target, usually one Rocco or one Glaive, which are cheap targets. Numerous targets in this case. And wasting a lot of Racketeer missiles. So at this point, Feltas is pushing in just because of the Racketeer missed targeting. And the Sniper as well should point out... But a Roach gets rid of half the army, so Kamar is not out of this game quite yet. Very clever use of a Roach there. Probably just a trap. Good patience, though. Didn't get rid of the Sniper, however. That Sharpshooter is still... That's still making some waves. That's still... That's still causing Feltas some problems. It's not being targeted. Due to the fact that it's cloaked, it can't easily be targeted. And bandits can easily run in here thanks to the glaive support. But if they could, if they did reveal the sharpshooter, it could be disarmed. It could be targeted. It could be killed. But it hasn't been. That sharpshooter has been alive for a lot of this time. And two sharpshooters in play as well. Feldhaus really does not have... Well, the most to worry about. He has stuff, stuff to worry about. But Kamar can't get in as easily as he'd like. That being said, though, a lucky road shot would get rid of these snipers. Bandits would reveal them. I'm not sure that's the best option. Maybe Spider Switch and then Fleas, but that might be a bit too expensive at this point. And Kmar is getting assaulted once again. I think Feldos is going to go for the kill this time. Enough Glaives are in play to just get rid of the Rogues without too much issue. The Rockos as well going to help out, but really it's the Glaives. The speed of the Glaives helps out. The Newtons, Newton for Kmar, going to do what it can, but I think the Rogues can outrange it. No, they're equal range. Yeah, so the Rogues basically... Not quite outrange it. They are, because of the fact they're equal range, the rogues cannot get a clear shot off. The snipers, however, can. And they will, and they'll finish that off. Hammer as well. 
continuing to deal damage over to this east side of the map, but failed us. Main damage is being dealt in the north. Thugs coming in to replace those lost rogues. And maybe if... Okay, Thug Felon Ball, that would help a ton here. Sort of. The Sharpshooter is actually in place, so that wouldn't help the most... Yeah, that's that's not the biggest deal, huh? That really isn't. I mean, it helps somewhat, but it's... Those Sharpshooters just counter that, too. And really, the Sharpshooters have really just been support at this point. They've been... Dealing some splash damage, they've been able to get rid of the range advantage that the rogues have, but if felons came up, that would be a big problem. And down goes, oh, down goes an energy transmission pylon. Nothing major, just happens to explode in a big way. Yeah, energy, failed us, commander is still in play. Kmart's commander was lost a long time ago. And the amphibious operations plant is gonna go down soon after. It's getting heavily attacked. It's, oh, what's coming out of the shield factory? Aspis, okay. That's not going to help too much. I mean, the thugs... Obviously, the shields help the thugs, but... The glaives can just run under the shield, so it really doesn't make a difference. And the sharpshooter can tear it apart. And enough shots coming in these rogues. The rogues being split up. Torn apart by glaives. And I think Kmart doesn't have much to go with here. And no roaches have been built, by the way. No further roaches right now. None in play. A couple of are trying to do what they can off the edge of the map, but they are way off on the edge of the map. And like I said, there's too many units in play. Kmart throws in the towel. That is game. Interesting game, but kind of slow down a bit near the center. Or near the middle, in the center of the map. Anyway. Last game will be coming up fairly shortly. It'll be Drone and El Torero on Ravage, so stay tuned for that.